I consider myself, uh, along with my colleague Tulsi Gabbard, as a startup congressman. And how appropriate uh, to be here in uh, startup uh, center of America uh, here in Silicon Valley, and also to be honoring, uh, as Mahir mentioned, HAF as it is in its 10th year. Uh, no longer a startup, uh, it is up and running, and boy, has HAF made uh, real uh, great progress, and I was honored to uh, talk about that progress just this past Monday on the floor of the House of Representatives. And whether it's issues relating to human rights, religious freedom, or civil rights, HAF has always been there from its inception to stand up for the interests of Hindus and Hindu Americans everywhere. This work is critical in moving forward a positive agenda at the federal level. And I'm proud to be fighting alongside HAF on these federal issues as a member of Congress. And as I said on the floor earlier this week, the FBI has finally, finally agreed to collect data on hate crimes against Hindus in the United States. This came And I was proud on that issue to lead a letter uh, with many of my other colleagues in Congress uh, to the FBI, having served as a hate crimes prosecutor in the Alameda County District Attorney's Office, where I saw that even in the most progressive uh, area of the world, uh, we still have many hearts and minds to change uh, when it comes to how we treat each other. And so uh, the FBI's step to do that uh, is a big one, and I look forward to working uh, to look at those numbers to make sure uh, that we're moving forward uh, to make sure that Hindu Americans, uh, Muslim Americans, uh, Sikh Americans, every American is always uh, treated fairly. Also, uh, among the many challenges we need to allow uh, is immigration reform. Right now, domestically, there's no issue that is more important to me uh, for our economic and national security than to have comprehensive immigration reform in the United States. And the only way we can do that is through the United States Congress, and I'm fighting there with Congressman Mike Honda with my colleague Tulsi Gabbard, and we must make sure that we have an immigration reform uh, package that allows us to realize economic opportunity here in the United States to make sure that if we are going to recruit and attract the best talent across the world uh, by having people come here and study in our schools, that we do not send them back to the country of origin, but we keep them here in America. We know that 40% of the largest companies in America were formed by people who are either immigrants or the children of immigrants. So uh, immigrants bring economic value to our country, but also it's in our DNA as a country here in the United States. Uh, at, at the base of the Statue of Liberty, uh, there is a poem by Emma Lazarus, which says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. We have always embraced immigration in our country. We know that our country was built on the hearts and minds of immigrants, and we cannot turn back. We must look forward, embrace our past, and I'm honored to work with HAF to do this. I'm honored that Samir Kalra is on my uh, Immigration Advisory Board uh, Committee, and I know that we're going to have that pathway to citizenship. We're going to have the family reunification. I know that Congressman Honda is working on that, and I signed on to his bill, uh, which would allow us to expedite the family reunification uh, and he's got the Reuniting Families Act uh, in the Congress. I also want to talk a little bit about something that's been on all of your minds, and that is the crisis uh, in Syria. And it is just awful and abominable that a ruthless dictator uh, is using chemical weapons on his own people to advance his own political agenda. But what we cannot do as a country in the United States is think that this is a false choice that we can either do nothing or we can use military force. I reject that line of thinking. We learned and paid a price from that line of thinking. <laughs> and I'm encouraged that today we saw that there is a third way to address these problems, and that's talking to the international community. That's exhausting all diplomatic channels before you use international force, and I'm proud that an agreement was tentatively reached today to make sure that that ruthless dictator gives up all of his chemical weapons, but that not a single missile, at least right now, is going to have to be fired. That's how we should solve our problems in the international community. So I look forward to continuing to work with HAF, and there's no better advocate that you have uh, outside of your organization than in Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. She's my next door neighbor in the Cannon House office building. 
our offices are right next to each other. I actually had the opportunity. I went to Hawaii to escape uh, the after elect the post election trauma I had the day after the election, and I was there and I saw all of these beautiful billboards with Tulsi on them, and I saw in the uh, Honolulu paper that Tulsi had just won. So I looked Tulsi up. I told her I was staying in Hawaii for a few days before we went back to the Congress. Tulsi and I met, and we immediately became uh, fast friends. Our offices are right next to each other. But I have seen that Tulsi uh, carries uh, her passion for the issues and her passion uh, for HAF, not just in what she does at events like this tonight, but she lives it out on the House floor. I saw Tulsi bring a chaplain uh, to the House floor to lead us uh, with a Hindu prayer to start the House of Representatives. That is somebody who doesn't just come to an event like this and talks about it. <laughs> Tulsi, also is an Iraq War uh, veteran, is somebody who cares about those she served with and has not forgotten about them uh, in the House floor. And she was able to, <laughs> Tulsi was able to pass a resolution. And we don't pass many resolutions in the Congress uh, these days. It's so gridlocked and divided. Uh, with an extreme right House Republican leadership. But Tulsi was able to pass a House resolution that will allow our veterans, our disabled veterans, those who have lost uh, limbs, to no longer have to go through TSA security in an undignified way where they're going through metal, metal detectors, being stripped down in front of everybody while they're in their wheelchairs. They're going to have a different screening process. And I saw Tulsi that day on the House floor. And I have to tell you, she wanted to not only pass it, she wanted to pass it unanimously. And we've got this guy in the Congress. I won't say his name, but whenever we pass something like 430 to 0 or, or 1, he's always the one. And so Tulsi, Tulsi was focused on making sure it was unanimous. I said, Tulsi, I don't know. He votes against everything. Like He literally comes here and votes against everything. And she's like, no, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. And I saw her sitting on the floor talking to him. And he's shaking his head. And I'm like, oh, boy, Tulsi's going to have 434 to 1. But sure enough, Tulsi convinced him. She persuaded him. It unanimously passed, and it was signed by the president just a few weeks ago. <laughs> so congratulations again. Congratulations, Mahir, and the community. And I look forward to continuing to work with you. And again, uh, you have an advocate in Tulsi Gabbard, and I'm looking forward to hearing her remarks tonight. Thank you.